What's up everybody, my name is Sayushi and today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on the Phantom Spark, which is the legendary bow that you can end up crafting in the game. So if I open my map and we move over to the ocean, you're going to end up seeing that I have a extra large temple here, here, and here. So these are going to end up being uh, super duper massive big temples that you're going to end up finding out in the world, uh, much bigger than the normal sunken monuments. This is going to end up being a normal sunken temple size. This is going to end up being one of the ones that has uh, the item related to the legendary bow. Now, when you end up going into these temples, you're going to eventually find this room. And this room is going to end up having a deactivated core. So it's going to end up being the same as the one that you end up seeing in the hub. Uh, and what you're going to do in these rooms is you're going to be looking for a chest that is going to end up having one of the bow materials. And then you're also going to end up interacting with the deactivated core in order to end up getting one of the key cards. You're going to have to do this for each of the three different temples. And this portal in the center right here is going to end up being the final room that you have to find, which isn't going to end up being a temple. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But before I get too ahead of myself, how do you end up actually finding these? All right, so I'm actually going to be opening up a browser map tool right now. I'll put a link in the description where you guys can end up finding this. And uh, essentially what you're going to do is you can always click for directions right here in the top left corner. And you'll notice that in the user, username, app data, local, low, pug storm, core keeper, steam folder, that's where you're going to end up finding your character. So Pugstorm, Core Keeper, Steam. And then right here, this numbered area uh, is going to end up being my maps, my character save, so on and so forth. And what we're gonna be doing is going into the maps folder. And then again, right here, this number zero is my world. So this is going to end up being my main maps. Uh, as you can see, I do have a couple different maps, but I know for a fact that world zero is going to end up being my main. So once you have the file located, once we end up loading it, you can see now that I've got my entire world and everywhere that I've explored in this browser program. So now that we've got my world loaded, what we're going to do is use the user refined radius, and that's going to end up helping us to find the temples because what this is going to do is based on the number that we add, let's add a thousand, for example, it's going to end up creating this ring a thousand blocks away from the center of your world. Now, the reason why this is important is because each of these different uh, areas is actually going to generate based on a certain distance from your center. So if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see this is the thousand block axis, right? And right here in the middle, this is going to end up being the final tomb that I ended up mentioning. This is going to end up being the finale area. That's going to end up being on the thousand block axis. And I ended up exploring all the way over here and then all the way down here before I ended up finding it because this uh, is going to end up being the only temple that will actually generate on a little bit of an island. But you can see it's smack dab in the middle of that thousand block range. Next is going to be 1,250. And you'll notice again, I did quite a bit of exploration of this axis, uh, but I ended up getting particularly lucky because you'll see that here is one of the three sunken cities at the 1,250 axis. Next is 1,550, and that's actually going to end up being the second temple right here. And lastly, 1,750 is going to end up being the last temple down here. Now, you might not get as lucky as I did. You see, I kind of got super duper fortunate where I just found this one, found this one, and then I just moved on, and I already just organically found this uh, third temple up here. Uh, so you might end up having to explore a lot more but as you see with the thousand block radius I, I had to actually explore a lot of it so the point is that once you end up having the radius you're just gonna follow that until you end up seeing a sunken temple I would recommend that you only end up tackling this once you have teleporters because otherwise you're essentially going to go to these locations and then you're gonna leave and if you don't put a teleporter down, it can be really, really time consuming to get back to this location, especially because stuff like this happens where enemies end up spawning and so on and so forth. The way that you know for sure, without a doubt, that you found one of these giant legendary sunken temples is they're going to have something crazy at the front entrance. And the front entrance is always going 
going to end up generating on the bottom. It can't generate on the sides. So that's why you'll see, I just saw this was here. I went all the way around, went to the bottom, took a peek, and I saw that that was it. Same with this one. I ended up going straight for the bottom as well. You might also notice that it did generate in a triangle. Now, the triangle shape is going to end up being different for your world, but I would try to keep that in mind because I did notice that my friend who ended up doing the same thing, uh, his temples ended up generating in a triangle as well, although the shape was slightly different. My point is that more than likely, you will end up having two temples beside each other, and once you've found these two points, you know that it's going to be pretty good odds of finding the other one off uh, on its own. And then this is going to end up being that last temple that I mentioned, which is going to end up being very small, and as you can see, it's on an island, right? Now, when you first find this, the door is going to end up being sealed, and in order to end up opening the door, you're going to have to craft this crystal item that this NPC sells and how you end up crafting it is the item that you get from the dismantled cores within these temples is going to end up all combining into one specific gem that is going to end up being used to open this last temple. Once you end up going inside the temple, there's going to end up being a big chest with a bunch of valuables and so on and so forth. And ultimately, it's going to end up giving you this parchment. And then all you got to do is just put the parchment into your hotbar and make sure you have all of the items in your inventory when you end up right clicking and using it. And then you'll end up having the Phantom Spark, which is the most powerful ranged weapon in the entire game. Most of all, just because of its passive abilities of having crit hit chance and crit hit damage, as well as a pretty nice passive buff where a 20% chance to summon a ghost caveling when killing an enemy. And what this guy's going to do is he's essentially going to end up healing you. And he does a really good job of that. 